and welcome back to lag. So just another short Java lesson today. Uh, we'll be talking about booleans, which are uh, variables that hold the true false value. Uh, for loops and while loops, just basic syntax, stuff like that. So remember I was talking about if statements in the last episode where you would type in something like a number greater than 1, or something like that. This, uh, this statement is a boolean statement, because it can only resolve to true or false. Now you can hold this type of information in a type called boolean, which is written with the word boolean, and then we give it a name like anything else, is true maybe, and then we make it equal to true. Now, it can only hold a true or false value, so it can only ever hold the true or false, as in the words. Um, if you try and put in uh, number, it's not going to work for you. Uh, I think one might work. No. Okay, so it must be the word. Now we're going to be true. Uh, we'll just get rid of this if statement. So, we're going to talk about a while loop first, before a for loop. Now, a while loop uh, is basically the very basic of loops uh, that's been around in programming since the dawn of time, basically. Um, and the syntax basically goes while, and then just like an if statement, while something is true, it will do something. So while is true, it will do this. So we're going to make it print uh, Oh, it didn't like that. There we go. We're going to make it print Hello viewers. Now this will continuously loop until this condition resolves to false. So you'll see that when I do this. And this is called an infinite loop because there is no way for the loop to exit. So you'll just see down the bottom um, it continuously printing out hello viewers infinitely. Now that will eventually use up all your computer's inf uh, resources like its RAM and CPU until the whole program crashes. Uh, there's a little red square down here called terminate, and that'll stop your program. Um, so, we need something in here to control what we're doing. So, if a number is equal to, well, we'll do something different, greater than or equal to 1, we want it to print, hello viewers. Else, we want it to go is true equal to false. So if a number is not greater than or equal to 1, it will uh, trigger the else statement and it will exit the loop. So at the moment, it's going to freak out on us. But if we change the value of a number to 0, I will just put a print in here to show you that it will only work once, and then I'll run it. If we run this now, it will run through once, change this to false, then it will check again to see if true, but it will be false, so the, exit, so the loop will exit and will only run once, as you can see. So that's a basic for loop. Now in here you can put any statement. So I can put this if I wanted. There we go. And we can change it to 1 and it'll still work the same. There we go, infinite. Change it to 0. If Because I've changed it to 0, the while loop will check and obviously a number is less than 1. Uh, so the while loop won't run at all, as you can see. Alright. So that is a um, basic while loop, 
and I'll just show you the syntax for a basic for loop. Now a for loop is different to a while loop as you can specify the amount of time, like the number of times it will loop. Uh, a while loop will can just keep looping until the statement fails. A for loop doesn't check any statement. Oh, well it does, but not in the same way. And it, it, you can limit the amount of times it runs. Now, the first part is you have to initialize a number that it starts at. So we're going to start at zero. And then we're going to type in the condition, so the limit, usually. So i less than five. This will mean it will run uh, four times. If I put an equals to, it will run five times, but this will run four times, and we're going to step it once every time, because you can step it by any number you like, so you can go from zero, add three steps, so make i equal to three, and then the for loop will only run twice, but we're just going to go plus plus i. Plus plus i is just shorthand syntax to to say i equals i plus whoop, plus one. That's what plus plus i means. All right, there we go. And now we can put this same thing in here. Uh, get rid of that. And you should only see it about four times, maybe five, we'll see what happens. Nothing. Ah! Why nothing? A number is equal to if... Sorry. There we go. So that screwed up because um, I had i greater than five. And because it starts at zero, it can't be greater than five, so it immediately failed. So i less than five, so while i is less than five, it will iterate until the point uh, when it reaches five. And so, in other words, it iterates five times. Uh, one, two, three, four, five times. There we go. Now, if we change, so that. How do I explain it? In the background of the po program, a f this for loop is basically the same as a while loop. It just looks nicer and is easier to set up. Uh, because it still iterates while something happens, except it won't loop infinitely, basically. You can step it how you want to. That's sort of the difference. If I rewrote this in a while loop, it would look something like uh, you'd initialize i out here, int i equals zero. We'd make this um, i less than five. And then at the end of the, for, the while loop, you may put i, plus plus i, just like that. And that while loop will only iterate five times, like the for loop. I'll prove that now. Uh, we'll just put a print statement in here so we know when the for loop starts running. For loop. There we go. Ah, little problem there. Because we moved that the initializer up there, um, it's it's going. You can't have two variables the same name. All right, so there we go. Ah, oh, uh, not a very good example. There we go. All right, so here's the while loop. As you can see, it iterates five times, and then the for loop starts. So that will go five times as well. So this for loop is basically the same as this while loop. So you can use each one ind 
interchangeably. It just depends on uh, what kind of thing you're trying to program. Uh, yeah, that's uh, basically uh, most of the, lo the basic loops in programming. Uh, you'll find these loops in most languages, not just Java. Um, they'll just differ in syntax slightly. Before I go, uh, as per last time, I'll put the code up for this lesson in my blog, so check the description for the link. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.